Hey guys, what's up? Liptesh here, welcome back to another video. So AMD just unveiled the latest generation of Zen 3 based desktop CPUs labeled as Ryzen 5000. It's quite exciting stuff. This video is not going to be a super detailed video on everything about the launch. For that, I recommend you to go and watch Hardware Unboxed or Gamers Next video. But in this video, we will briefly discuss on what AMD launched, what improvements they announced and at the end, I'm going to give my opinion on the elephant in the room that is the pricing. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So first of all, Zen 3 is still based on TSMC 7 nanometer process. No changes in that. It's not 7 nanometer plus, it's not 5 nanometer, it's still 7 nanometer. And the four 5000 series desktop CPUs launched are as follows. So the first one is the Ryzen 5 5600X, 6 core, 12 threads, 4.6 gigahertz boost. The 8 core, 16 threads, Ryzen 7 5800X, uh, 4.7 gigahertz boost. The 12 core, 24 threads, Ryzen 9 5900X with the 4.8 gigahertz boost. And the king of the hill, the 16 cores, 32 threads, Ryzen 9 5950X uh, with a boost clock up to 4.9 gigahertz. So unfortunately, we did not break the barrier of 5 gigahertz yet maybe in the xt series they will break the 5 gigahertz barrier but for now no 5 gigahertz 4.9 gigahertz is maximum and these cpus are the direct successor to the previous generation ryzen 5 3600x the ryzen 7 3800x the ryzen 9 3900x and the ryzen 9 3950x uh, so as you saw there is no changes in core counts the core counts is still the same and the power consumption as a result is also the same so no changes in power consumption no changes in core counts the big changes that they have announced is the way the CCX layouts work now. So unlike previous generation Zen 2, we no longer have, you know, the eight cores split into two CCX modules of four cores each and with each core getting access to 16 megabytes of L3 cache in each CCX. But this generation with Zen 3, what they have done is they have put all the eight cores in a single CCX module with each core getting access to all the 32 megabytes of L3 cache. This results in reduced latency for both cores and memory, significantly improving gaming performance. Not only that, AMD has claimed 19% IPC performance over Zen 2. And that is quite amazing because Zen 2 already had tremendous IPC performance. See, with Zen 2, AMD has already established themselves as the king of productivity workloads. And although with Zen 2, AMD gained huge single threading performance, they also gained a lot of uh, gaming performance compared to previous Zen Plus. They also launched really tremendous value for money gaming slash productivity CPUs like the Ryzen 5 3600. They still couldn't quite snatch the crown from Intel when it comes to ultimate gaming performance at 1080p. Now all that supposedly changes this year with the release of Ryzen 5000. As AMD is now pitching the Ryzen 9 5900X as quote unquote the world's best gaming CPU. Now that's an insanely bold claim. See, AMD is already the king of for productivity workloads and now they're claiming that they're the ultimate gaming king also. Big claims. And AMD does have a lot of benchmark results to back their claims. And uh, although we should take, you know, benchmark numbers from the company themselves with a grain of salt. But as far as I've seen benchmarks from AMD, their benchmarks are quite fair and square. Like unlike Intel, they don't use any kind of obscure benchmarks which nobody uses or they don't underpower the system that they are comparing themselves with. So AMD compared their 5900X with the Intel Core i9-10900K which is currently the fastest gaming CPU on planet Earth and in Cinemage R20 in single core benchmark which Intel normally leads, the Ryzen 9 5900X has scored 631 points which makes the 5900X the world's first desktop CPU to break the 600 points barrier in single core test of the Cinebench R20 benchmark compared to the Intel 10900K which scored 544 points in the same benchmark. Now that's some serious improvement compared to the previous generation 3900X which used to score 530 points ish in Cinebench R20 single core test. We are again seeing that the new generation Zen 3 5900X is about 19% faster albeit with slightly higher boost clocks. Remember that. What's even more amazing is in the upgrades in gaming performance. So compared to the previous generation fastest Ryzen uh, CPU for gaming the 3900XT the new Ryzen 9 5900X shows massive upgrades almost like in few games it is showing a upgrade of about 50% so that's that's a huge upgrade compared to Zen 2 and surprisingly compared to the Intel Core i9 10900K AMD is claiming that it is beating the 10900K also in most games honestly that's just shocking 
because the 10900K is currently the fastest gaming CPU right now and even if AMD would be able to like match the 10900K in games I would have been impressed but AMD is claiming that in most games the Ryzen 9 is actually beating the i9 10900K that's just amazing to me I mean I couldn't believe that from going from Zen 2 to Zen 3, they will have like this big of upgrade in terms of gaming performance. In fact, AMD is showing that it is beating Intel in games that previously favored Intel. Point to note, AMD did say that they can't beat Intel in all games but they are getting very close, to which I am more than satisfied. AMD is also claiming that they now have the fastest single core performance in single thread productivity workloads like in SOLIDWORKS. So overall there has been a ton of improvements. Now coming to the price. So each of the Ryzen 5000 CPUs announced is priced $50 more than their predecessors. Now I'm gonna keep it short and simple. It would have been absolutely amazing if AMD could have kept the same prices but in my opinion the $50 premium over last generation is reasonable. AMD is claiming that each of the CPUs announced are best in class for gaming and productivity. Increased pricing doesn't necessarily mean worse value for money, especially given the fact that there has been substantial improvements in gaming, IPC performance and core clocks. 5600X is priced the same as the i5-10600K, 5800X is more expensive than the 10700K and the 5900X is slightly more expensive than the 10900K. But AMD definitely provides way more performance in productivity, more cores and now they claim that they can match or beat Intel in gaming as well. Essentially claiming that they are no longer the underdogs and can charge more. This is a very important mindset that AMD is pitching forward. They are claiming that they are no longer the underdogs and they can charge more. Also AMD has really amazing value for money 500 series motherboards like the B550 series and 500 series motherboards already have the BIOS updates available for flashing which is really good news and AMD has also kept their promise and 400 series motherboards will receive BIOS updates early 2021. What I am kind of disappointed about is there was no mention of non-X parts at least at launch like previous years like the successor to the extremely popular Ryzen 5 3600 or the Ryzen 7 3700X. Although Hardware Unbox did say that AMD didn't outright deny the possibility of cheaper, slightly lower clock non-X parts, I am expecting budget variants of the Ryzen 5000 series at around $200 or $250 region in the future. So fingers are crossed. Also cannot wait for Zen 3 to enter laptops as well. So overall amazing job AMD, you've once again exceeded the expectations. Congratulations to Dr. Lisa Su and the entire development team at AMD. Just don't get greedy in the future and keep satisfying enthusiasts as well as the budget users with your amazing products. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. This was all my opinions. Uh, comment down below about what you feel about my opinion and what you think about the AMD 5000 launch. Uh, that's it guys, subscribe, join the discord server. My name is Uptesh and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.